Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're going to go in a little bit more depth with the for each loop, really trying to understand when it's good to be used and also understanding when you can use something inside of a for each. So for example, we use this list here. How do we know if something can be used in a for each? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So I'm gonna go a little deep here, but pay attention because this is actually gonna help you a lot. So if you right click list, I'm on Visual Studio. If you're using some other IDE, this might not be a capability, but what we're gonna do is go to declaration. And we're gonna get a little bit behind the scenes of what the type system in C Sharp is like. So this describes the list class that we've been using. And you see this T here? That means it's a generic class that T gets substituted for integer or string or whatever type we're using with this list. And you see this colon, and that talks about inheritance. So anything after this colon, it inherits from. And you can see there's I collection, I enumerable, I yada yada yada. So anytime you see I followed by some name, that's a convention for interfaces. And interfaces basically define some behavior that the class then implements. And one of them in here is I enumerable. You can see it right here and here. I enumerable is what defines the capability to be used in a for each. So this list class, when it was made, it agreed to have the code needed to work inside of a for each. So again, why exactly does list work inside of a for each? Because it had that capability baked in when it was created. So if there are other types that implement I enumerable, we should be able to use those inside of a for each. So to see this somewhere else, let's go over to the left here and look at some other types. Let's collapse this and collapse this and take a look at system.runtime. So in here, you're gonna see system, expand that and scroll down and find array. So you can double click array. So this is system.array. It's the base class for all these arrays we've been using in earlier videos. And you can see in here, it also implements I enumerable. So that means we should be able to use arrays inside of for each's as well. So going back to our code, you can easily see this real simply without actually creating an array just by taking our list and converting it to an array and passing that into for each. And you can see it still works. There's no compiling errors. So we've worked with lists and arrays, but there is a lot more of them out there. Going back to the assembly browser up here, collapsing this and going back into system.collections.generic, you can see a lot of them here. So for example, open up hash set, I enumerable linked list, I enumerable, and so forth. So there's a lot more types than just arrays and lists, which we've talked about so far, but obviously we can't cover everything, <laughs> at least not in just a couple of videos. So as we go on, we're gonna try and learn more and more, but the primary ones you should know is a list and an array, because all of these other types here, you can kind of compare how they're different to a list to understand them. So if you take a list and keep that as your basis, your home ground, it's easier to pick up these other types. I mean, like seriously, once you learn how a list works, a sorted list is not that much harder. So as you get into more advanced computer science stuff, you'll probably learn how to program some of these yourself. But if they exist out there, no sense in recreating the wheel, but it's usually done for computer science problems. So for example, in C, I had to create a linked list. I've also had to do a queue and so forth. All right, so going back to our program, when would you want to use a for each? Well, if you're not modifying the value, it's a really good loop because it's very, very clean and it's essentially self-documenting because you can easily see what you're trying to do. With for loops, you have to think about where it starts, how it is increasing or decreasing, and when it stops, which this easily leads to off by one errors. So either you're stopping too early or you're going too far and getting an index out of range. With four each's, that does not happen. It automatically knows when to stop. So it's going to reduce bugs. So anytime you can use a four each, I would highly recommend you go that route. So that's a little bit more info on the four each. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.